Yeah, something wrong? Go ahead and ask. I've killed people before, but not if I don't have to. Oh, do I? Is that it? How you could ever possibly hope to understand is beyond me. Jedi don't have family. I know what happened at Malachor 5, and I know the Jedi didn't care about life there. Get away from me. The next time you come and ask me a question, I swear I'll shoot you in the head and dump you out the airlock. What do you want now? Whatever, don't worry about it. It's just a sore subject with me. Yeah, well, they're dead. That's how that story ends. But not everybody's story has to end with losing their family or their loved ones. And not all the bounty hunting I do is for criminals or killers. There's a lot of lost people out there. Scattered ever since the Mandalorian Wars. And sometimes, it's like you can almost hear them. Like an echo, calling out for each other. And maybe, just maybe by finding them, I can start putting the galaxy back together. Maybe. We'll see. I don't even know why I'm telling you this. But you're not getting anything else out of me. Yeah, something wrong? Go ahead and ask. It's all this traveling. I'd rather be doing something. Yeah, it's been a while since I've been off planet. Well, Nar Shadda may be one of the biggest cesspits in the galaxy, but it's got a life to it. Activity, aliens, people, refugees. It's like noise, but relaxing. Like the hum of a hyperdrive. Yeah, well, I wouldn't go that far. I'll believe it when I see it. No thanks. You can Go ahead and ask. I've killed people before. I know. It's different. I don't know why. I don't know. I... I haven't killed anyone for a long time. But when I'm around you, suddenly it's like I've always been doing it. It's like a reflex. I don't like it. And I don't know when or why it became so easy. Go ahead and ask. Yeah, more or less. Well, the war happened. The first one, against the Mandalorians. I had family right up until the end. It's not really a new story. You hear it all over the galaxy. It's what happens after the wars are over that you don't hear much about. I think so. After Revan crushed the Mandalorians, planets throughout the Republic were flooded with refugees. And I was just one of the others. Me? I got passage to Nar Shaddaa. From there, not much you can do, so I became a bounty hunter. Take a guess, Jedi. Only two groups of people would have lost family at Malachor. And Jedi don't have families. As much as any slave becomes a Mandalorian, they took prisoners on every world they conquered to bolster their ranks. And they took a lot of worlds. When I was young, yeah. They mostly used me to carry ammo packs and munitions. Toward the end of the war, they needed everyone they could get. They taught me to fight, to hunt, to survive. I was part of their squad, even when I was young. Everyone served as part of the unit, and I, I felt like I had a place there. After Malachor, it really didn't matter anymore. The Mandalorians lost. Bad. But you know that. Yeah, I know. I saw the worlds they left behind them during the war. That kind of stays with you, I haven't forgotten it. What happened at Malachor, they... They probably deserved it. Should I be? Maybe I should ask you if you're happy about all the Jedi who died on Malachor V. Maybe it felt like you lost family there, but I doubt it. Yeah, I know. 
I saw that kind of stays with you. I haven't. Go ahead and ask. I didn't kill him once. Biggest. Do you really want to hear this? Well, Hanhar and me go way back, in the worst possible way. He's from some forest planet on the Outer Rim where Zerka had set up one of their slaving operations. I don't remember the name. Something with too many K's and Y's. It sounds like you're gargling Ronto spit when you say it. No idea. He's just... Hanhar. I hope there aren't any more like him. I get the impression he's not a good representative of his people, though. He's the equivalent of a mad calf hound among Rontos. Some of Voga the Het's men said Hanhar killed his own tribe, but those two crud thugs lie every time they open their mouths, so who knows? Well, not for long. Once off planet, Hanhar escaped from the Zerka slavers, then killed them all. I don't know. I always thought he just liked using them as weapons. Well, before you get too proud of him, Hanhar figured Zerka had the right idea. I don't think he understood the concept of slavery before, at least on the scale that Zerka practiced it. But now he did. You ever hear of Dursan III, or the ID Cluster Colonies? Right, that's because Hanhar happened. He makes what happened to his homeworld look like an exercise in community building. He's not a bounty hunter. He's a slaver. A predator. It's like he's out to enslave or kill every human in the galaxy, like he's trying to settle some huge score or debt. I don't get it, but he's dangerous. Anyone who paid credits. And sometimes, he just hunted humans for sport. The ones who survived, he sold to the exchange, to the huts, to anyone who'd buy bodies, living or dead. He and Voga used to do big credit transactions. That hut really liked the look of unwrinkled humans for some reason. Didn't make him too popular with the other huts, let me tell you. I was prey. And not only did I escape, but I saved his life while doing it. He's been hunting me ever since. I don't pretend to understand it, but among his people, they have these codes of honor. But somewhere along the line, Hanhar's got twisted. His people form these things called life debts. If you save the life of one of them, they pledge themselves to you. Well, with Hanhar, he can't escape that life debt. It's bred into him. But he hates every other living thing in the galaxy, so pledging himself to someone else, especially a human, was unbearable. So when I saved his life, it was the worst thing I could do. It was like slavery all over again. But it was in his head. It was like it pushed him over the edge. A life debt to Hanhar is a death sentence. He'll hunt you until you're dead. When I saved his life, it meant he had to kill me. And so he kept chasing me in hopes I would die. I think the fact I showed him mercy after hating humans for so long, that was something he couldn't stand. Yeah, tell me about it. Like I said, I get the impression a life debt's supposed to be a gift, but to Hanhar, it's more like a curse to both people involved. Probably. But if he had multiple life debts, especially to humans, Hanhar would probably go mad. He was angry before, sure, but he'd be ten times worse if that happened. Hanhar's tough. Really tough. And when he loses it, it's like nothing can stop him. I've seen him shrug off blaster bolts, both and stunners. 
and even survive a freighter crash on Dursan 3. He keeps coming. Oh, I'm glad he's gone. It's like a weight off my shoulders. I don't have to keep watching my back every minute, wondering when he's going to show up. And he always did. It's like he always knew where I was. Trust me, if he was still alive, he'd be chasing us even now, waiting to ambush us when we least expect it. And he always shows up at the worst possible time. He was one of the best bounty hunters on Nar Shaddaa. Anhar never gives up on his prey. Or his life debts. He's a hunter. He's a natural predator. Well, as happens on Nar Shaddaa, I made someone mad. Mad enough for them to send Hanhar after me. Turns out they were even able to get him cheap. He heard about me and wanted to hunt me down, for sport. He didn't think I'd be much of a challenge. <laughs> well, he tried to box me down in vents beneath the Nar Shaddaa docks, and he'd, he'd set one too many proximity mines to cover the escape routes. I think he'd hope to drive me into the mines and then let them do the work. Or that I'd be too scared to try and walk through them. Thing is, I knew Hanhar's supplier, and the trigger signatures for the mines. It was pretty easy to broadcast a signal to blind their sensor receptors for a minute or two. I figured that would buy me enough time to move through them and get away. No, it isn't. I spent most of my childhood hauling mines and munitions. I got to know my way around them. If I hadn't, I wouldn't be here right now. Like I said, I disarmed the trigger fuses for enough of the mines to get by, temporarily. And Hanhar was pretty fast on my trail. I just made it to safety when he hit the first one. The blast leveled the entire ventilation section, and Hanhar was caught right in the middle, and he survived. Barely. He was crawling around, blinded from the flash and the plasma burns. And it happened so fast, and all the blood had been scabbed and crusted from the flash. I had the drop on him, and even blind, he knew it. He could still hear me. My ears were ringing from the blast, but I, I could hear him. I think he was begging me to let him live. His voice, it wasn't a roar, more like an echo of it. I suppose I should have killed him, but I couldn't do it. He was in pain, and he was helpless. So I dragged him out of there enough to get him to safety. And he kept hunting me ever since. He said he'd pursue me to the edge of the galaxy. No matter where I ran, he would find me and break me. That I would always be prey. Maybe. I've thought about that moment. A lot. Wondered if I would do things differently if I had another chance. Talk. About what? Why, are you trying to be my mother? No thanks. Already had one. Somewhere. No thanks. I didn't need friends on Nar Shaddaa, and I don't need them now. Go ahead and ask. Yeah, more or less. Well, the war happened. The first one? Against... It's what happens after the wars. I think so. After me? I got past... I'm good at finding people. So I... Not if you know your target. This is a little hard to explain, but Nar Shaddaa's got a flow, a life. You know your target, you can feel. I'm good at finding people. Go ahead and ask. It's all this traveling. 
I'd rather be doing something. Yeah, it's been a while since I... Well, Narshada, maybe it's got a life to it. Yeah, well... Maybe one day, I'll let you. All right, but I doubt you're going to show me anything I don't already know. And when you show me, don't act like a tourist. It attracts predators. Go ahead and ask. Yeah, something wrong? Go ahead and ask. Talk. About what? Why, you trying to be my mother? No. No thanks. Go ahead and ask. It's all this travel. I'd rather be doing something. Yeah, it's been a while. Well, Narshada, maybe one has got a life to... Yeah, well, uh, I wouldn't go... Maybe one day, I'll let you. All right, but... And when you show me... If you've got some time, I'd like to see what I can upgrade for you. Yes, I do have a few moments to spare for your work. I would like to know what he is doing here, though. He helps me out with repairs. That isn't a problem, is it? I suppose not. Perhaps in working on my circuitry, your assistant will learn something about how a fully functional droid is constructed. Just ignore him and let's get to work. I would appreciate that. Our group has little in the way of time to spare, and I would not want to delay you from your other duties. Right. Let's get you open. See what you can do. I have to say, you are put together quite well. <laughs> there wasn't much to do. As I told you, my design is streamlined and efficient, though I am pleased that you were able to make some improvements, and this was not just a waste of my valuable time. There were a few things from my remote that I was able to integrate into your construction. I see. Well, thank you. I'll let you get back to your work. Yeah, something wrong? Go ahead and ask. It's all this traveling. I'd rather be doing something. Yeah, it's been a while. Well, narsha has got a life to it. Yeah, well, uh, I... Maybe one day? Alright. And when you show me, don't act...
Yeah, something wrong. Talk. Why are you trying to be my mother? Go ahead and ask. Yeah, more or less. Talk. About what? Yeah, so go ahead and ask. It's all this traveling. I'd rather be doing. Yeah, it's been a while. Well, Narsha's got a life to it. Yeah, well, maybe one day. All right, but I doubt you're going to show me anything I don't already know. And when you show me, don't act like a tourist. It attracts predators. Something up? All right, what did you want to know? We must go to Dantuin to the Enclave. There is something there that you must hear, if you are to understand. I have no time for questions, and any answers will have to wait until we stand within the Enclave together. Yeah, something wrong. Go ahead and ask. It's all this traveling. I'd rather be doing something. Yeah, it's been a while. Well, Narshada may be one of the big. It's got a life to it. Yeah, well, uh, maybe one day. All right, but and when you show me.
It... it is different. It has been some time. For you, as I always have been, I will be fine here. Whatever answers the Council have are for you alone. I am tired. The journey has been a long one, and I need to center myself. Know that much may happen here, but above all, do not forget this. You may trust in me. We cradle each other's lives, and what threatens one of us, threatens us both. And if you find you cannot trust me, trust in your training, trust in yourself. Never doubt what you have done. All your decisions have brought you to this point. And now, perhaps, they shall see what you have become. It is not as it was. But perhaps that is for the best. We were wondering when you would arrive. This moment has taken some time to reach us, and I imagine you have many questions. Or perhaps you've come for revenge. Now, we will do as we have done. We will wait. There's nothing else we can do. Now, the true threat has yet to show itself. It is waiting for something. Us, perhaps, to enter the war. We have seen their soldiers, the remnants of their fleet, but those are symptoms of a disease. It is more bait to attempt to draw us out. The actual battle is being fought through the Force, not with weapons of war. It isn't about the Republic anymore. The attack on Onderon, something was attempting to use the planet itself, to feed on it, to draw on the power there. You prevented it, but it was a stalling measure. The next time will be critical. If Jedi gather, if we wage war against these shadows now, then Jedi will die, and we will die for nothing. Whatever this thing is, it must be fought by those strong in the Force. It cannot be fought in any other way. It knows this, and that is why it is killing us. If we die, then it will win, no matter what fleet or weapons are brought against it. We cast you out of the Order because you followed Revan to war. There was no other reason. No. There was another. You had become different somehow, changed. The war had changed you. You were no longer a Jedi, but we could not tell you why. Some explanations mean nothing unless the one who suffers comes to the answer on their own. What had happened to you was punishment enough, and the Jedi do not kill their prisoners. And if you had stayed, you would have changed us, and that we could not allow. You already know the answer. You've noticed it in those who travel with you. Have you noticed that when you act, others follow? Those that travel with you? They follow you without question, without hesitation. Against their instincts, and sometimes against their sense. It is because you are a leader, but that still fails to grasp the meaning of what I'm trying to tell you. 
It is not an easy thing to explain. Surely you are familiar with force bonds. It is the bond that develops between apprentice and master when one truly understands another. It is developed over time through understanding of each other. And yet you do it so easily and we do not know why. You make connections through the force and it resonates with those who travel with you. The resonance is even greater when they too are force sensitive. Your actions affect others more than you know. You draw others to you, especially those strong in the Force. When you suffer, their spirit echoes it. And when they are in pain, their pain becomes yours. We do not know, but it is not the first time you felt the weight of so many lives. And that is why the Mandalorian Wars echo within you still. We did not cut you off from the Force. You were merely deafened to it. Because of that last battle of the Mandalorian Wars. The screams of countless thousands, Jedi and Mandalorians, crushed by the planet's gravity, annihilated. Their lives still scream across the surface of that dead planet, and within you. To hear the Force over such pain, it is not possible. It was too much for any Jedi to endure. And it is a wonder that you did not die there when thousands perished. All those you had fought with and struggled with. You cut yourself off because you had to if you were to survive. You had hints of it in the war on Doxon. Malachor was simply the final blow. You were deafened. At last, you could hear. You were broken. You were whole. You were blinded. And at last, you saw. When you returned to us, we saw what had happened. You carry all those deaths at Malachor within you. And it has left a hole, a hunger that cannot be filled. In you, we saw a wound in the Force. In you, we saw the end of the Force. Yes. You can feel the Force, but you cannot feel yourself. You are a cipher, forming bonds, leeching the life of others, siphoning their will and dominating them. It is the teaching of these new Sith to feed on others, on other Force sensitives. They are symptomatic of the wound in the Force. You are a breach that must be closed. You transmit your pain, your suffering through the Force. Within you we see something worse than merely the teachings of the Sith. What you carry may mean the death of the Force, and the death of the Jedi. So you think. It is not the strength of a Jedi you feel. He's right. It's all the death you've caused to get here. You feed on it, and you grow stronger. You're like Malachor. It's in you, it's what you are now. You must have noticed as you fought across all these planets, killing hundreds, only to become more and more powerful. Why do you think that was? But what's worse is that bonding you have. It hasn't gone away. It's gotten stronger. And the more attachments you form, the more you draw others to you. And that is why you are a threat to us all. What if other Jedi went to war as you did, suffered the same events, and emerged as you did? What if there was a crucible that trained such Jedi to consume and kill? For you, Malachor was that crucible. What's worse is the Sith that we face. I fear that they have learned the lesson of Malachor all too well. It is what allows them to prey on Force users, to become stronger when Force sensitives are near. Somehow they have learned their hunger from you. And so you have brought about the end of the Jedi, and perhaps all the knowledge of the Force. But it is of no consequence. Your ability to make such connections, such bonds, so easily are why you cannot remain. You are a threat to living creatures and all who feel the Force. You will lead the Sith here, and that we cannot allow. Our judgment before remains. Exile. You must leave. And you must leave without your tie to the Force. It is a punishment reserved for only a few, and only when necessary. But we have the power to cut you off from the Force, and it must be done. Forgive us. 
but it is necessary. Do not be afraid. You shall feel no pain, but this must be done. As long as you feel the Force, you are a danger to those around you. Enough! Step away from her. What? Step away! She has brought truth, and you condemn it. The arrogance. You will not harm her. You will not harm her ever again. I thought you had died in the Mandalorian Wars. Die? No. Became stronger. Yes. Is this your new master, Exile? If so, then you follow Revan's path. Her teachings will cause you to fall as surely as he did. You sought to lure the Sith out, and now they have come to us. As you would pass judgment on her, I have come to pass judgment on you all. Do you wish to feel the teachings born of the Mandalorian Wars? Of all wars, of all tragedies that scream across the galaxy? Let me show you. You, who have forever seen the galaxy through the Force. See it through the eyes of the Exile. How could you ever hope to know the threat you face? when you have never walked in the dark places of the galaxy, faced war and death on such a scale. If you had traveled far enough, rather than waiting for the echo to reach you, perhaps you would have seen it for what it was. There is a place in the galaxy where the dark side of the Force runs strong. It is something of the Sith, but it was fueled by war. It corrupts all that walks on its surface drowns them in the power of the dark side. It corrupts all life, and it feeds on death. Revan knew the power of such places, and the power in making them. They can be used to break the will of others, of Jedi, promising them power and turning them to the dark side. Did you never wonder how Revan corrupted so many of the Jedi, so much of the Republic, so quickly? The Mandalorian Wars were a series of massacres that masked another war, a war of conversion, culminating in a final atrocity that no Jedi could walk away from, save one. And that is what I sought to understand. How one could turn away from such power, give up the Force, and still live. But I see what happened now. It is because you were afraid. She is no more. Take me to Atris. She will have the strength to do what the Council cannot. She's gone. The handmaidens came for her. They know who she is now. They'll take her to Telos, and Atris will do what she'll do with anyone she thinks is a Sith. Are you surprised? All that talk of hatred, manipulation, and standing on your own two feet? Sorry, you don't get any more Sith than that. 
Still, if we were all judged by who we were in the past, I don't think you'd understand who we are now. That's what I was afraid you'd say. Is something wrong? You look troubled. I can feel it. I do not understand what you mean. Never. I believe in what we are doing. What you are doing. I am here because I choose to be. I simply do. There is nothing I can show you as proof, except give you my word. Something happened within the Enclave. What is it? Then they do not understand you. That is the danger of being a Jedi. When one separates themselves from others, chooses to lead a life of isolation, denying what makes them a feeling being, it is easy to make such judgments. And such judgments, I believe, are made in ignorance. There is no danger in what you represent, other than your humanity. You change others, but I do not believe it is due to the Force. I believe it is because you are a natural leader, and because you feel connected to the people around you. Where they look at you and see the death of the Force, I look at you and see hope for all life. And that perhaps a life lived without the Force is not the punishment it is believed to be. I will understand if you feel you must go alone. I ask that you do not. Instead, take strength from your connections to others. Do not forsake them, as you did in exile. Who is there? Who I am is not the question. I am Atris, Jedi Master. The last historian of the Jedi. The last of the Jedi. Those are titles, words you cling to as the darkness falls around you. You are that which has attacked the Jedi. You are Sith. Sith is a title, yes, but like you, the title is not who I am. It is not what I believe. For you, it is different. Know that there was once a Darth Traya and that she cast aside that role, was exiled, and found a new purpose. But there must always be a Darth Traer, one that holds the knowledge of betrayal, who has been betrayed in their heart, and will betray in turn. You have bathed in the knowledge of the Sith. But there is not enough truth in such teachings. But it will be a step for you. How did it happen? Search your heart. It was never battle that called to you, never battle that caused you to fall. Alakor V has touched many things, and it casts its echoes still. Why did she betray me? You betrayed yourself. Do not blame the exile. And unlike you and I, there is still a chance that one may be saved. The one that you cast out. Where is the exile? I had thought... Oh, she will come, but it will be too late to save either of us. It is such a quiet thing to fall, but far more terrible is to admit it. Your mistress awaits. She has much to share with you.